This is Talk Radio across the UK, online, on DAB Plus, and on the Talk Radio app. Evenings with Kevin O'Sullivan on Talk Radio. Right, we're into the third hour. It is that time of night of a Monday uh, when we welcome to the show social commentator Connor Tomlinson. Good evening, Connor. Good evening again, Kevin. Welcome to the studio. Thank you for coming in. Uh, let's just have a listen uh, first to Stoke on Trent MP Jonathan Gullis, I think, talking to Mike Graham today on Talk Radio. The term white privilege, look, we looked at this on the Education Select Committee, and I totally agree with Dr. Tony Sewell, who's obviously from the Commission on Race yeah. and Equality, who said that actually what we need to be doing is focusing on the real needs of real people and not getting caught up in divisive terminology such as white privilege. You mm. are correct. It is something that's recently come about. And despite the fact that Labour Party MPs are, say, are saying to me, this is somehow um, widely accepted. Well, no, it's not. It's controversial. It's divisive. It pits people against one another. It doesn't bring people together. Now, Connor, uh, that was, as I say, MP uh, Jonathan Gillis. He's the MP for Stoke-on-Trent, uh, one of the new wave uh, of Tory MPs. Now, what he's particularly worried about in terms of this term white privilege is uh, the uptake on it by teachers. Teachers love to preach this to kids. Uh, they talk about critical race theory, uh, unconscious bias. Mm. Uh, you know, you may not think, uh, white kid, that you're a racist, but you are the beneficiary of white privilege and therefore unconsciously uh, you are a racist. Uh, this is their uh, ideology. It's been completely discredited. It is a load of old claptrap, but teachers have embraced it. They're passing it on to kids. And uh, what Jonathan Gullis is saying is uh, any teacher caught doing this uh, should be holed up for extremism. And he says that the term white privilege is in, excel in itself uh, racist. Uh, what are your thoughts? It's This pernicious, uh, pernicious racial witch hunting is obviously very harmful to kids. Because if you want to sit there in a classroom and demonise particularly male as well, white male competence, then those kids are going to internalise that and think, oh, I'm incredibly nihilistic. Anytime I try and succeed, I'm just perpetuating the patriarchy or racism or heteronormativity or whatever, whatever garbage term they want to throw out to marginalise normal people. Um, all he wants to do is up, uh, lift up the levels of, of education for the white working class boys in his constituency and across Britain who have fallen behind. And as he referenced Tony Sowell's report recently, those boys disproportionately are falling behind in education. And that means all their opportunities have a knock-on effect all throughout society. They're the most likely to be homeless. They're the most likely to die from drug overdoses, most likely to be alcoholic, most likely to uh, uh, be deaths of police custody even after all the irony of those uh, uh, riots last, last summer. Um, so him raising this very important issue is incredibly vital if, as the Labour Party so seemingly want to uh, uh, level up opportunities for everyone in the country, um, they should be addressing this as well. But they're unfortunately not. And it's because they've ceded to the intersectional ideologues in their party who who believe in white privilege as, as a fact, as some of the MPs have said to attack him. I mean, if you must go around uh, propagating this nonsense, then I suppose that is your right in mm. a free society. But I think teachers... Uh, ought to be hauled up about this. Uh, they are passing on a political ideology to their pupils. Uh, it is happening at schools all over the country uh, where white privilege, uh, unconscious bias, uh, critical race theory is being taught as if it's something uh, you know, impressive, something uh, that needs to be got across to kids. No, no, no. It's a political ideology. And just as we shouldn't be teaching kids to be Labour supporters or Tory supporters or communist supporters, we should not be teaching them uh, about critical race theory or white privilege. It's wrong, isn't it? Well, that's the, funnily enough, you, you raise the communist supporters as, as a part of that. The creators of critical race theory were avowed Marxists. You had bell hooks, you had Kimberly Crenshaw, who invented the term intersectionality. All of these people have like a critical race theory big fat book that say, uh, we reject Martin Luther King's dream of colour blindness because it doesn't afford our people particular advantages. Now, Obviously, if we turned around, if the true aim of white privilege was to, to dismantle it and say, oh, we're just going to look at each other as colour blindness and, and we won't select based on race, give each other advantages based on race. If that were the true aim, then they wouldn't be specifically attacking white privilege. They would be saying, let's have a liberal colour blind standard. Instead, they want to afford specific advantages to people that they think will vote for them. And therefore, mm. uh, they're, they're trying to pit us against each other because there's a lot of money in perpetuating that racial division and then suddenly saying, oh, our activism is, of course, the only answer. Um, if we turned around and said, hey, we want to be a colorblind society, 
all that nonsense would be become very unprofitable and be thrown out the window. But of course, they don't like that very much. Yeah. But uh, on Planet Common Sense, where talk radio is, obviously, <laughs> uh, what you would do would be to hand uh, out a, a direct directive mm -hmm. to all teachers. Uh, you cannot talk to kids about white privilege, unconscious bias or critical race theory. You can't do it. It's against the rules. But they're not being told this. They should be told it, yeah. shouldn't they? The scary thing is, though, so this has been attempted in, in America with the Republican legislatures for the Department of Education. And Kemi Badenoch over here after the riots last summer said that you can't teach, uh, specifically, you can't bring in BLM uh, specific uh, doctrines into the classroom that by that by that group and you can't teach specifically anti-capitalism in classrooms the problem is that's impossible to teach and now you're having critical race theory they're saying oh it's, it's a smoke screen it's just a legal do uh, legal academic doctrine that's not in classrooms instead they're doing this thing called critical race applied uh, applied practices and so they're embedding in things like maths questions things like uh oh um johnny is is uh, stopped three times by the police where um stereotypical name is stopped 12 times by the police yeah. was they're embedding these yeah, stereotypical yeah. ideas in kids' education, so it's very pernicious and it's actually well, very usually, difficult to police. You know, usually it'd be Johnny who identifies as non-binary was stopped yeah. by the police. You know, you've got to get everything <laughs> exactly, in. Exactly, yeah. You've got to cover all the ones. It's the bases. Oppression Olympics, of course. You've got, yeah. you've I'm only getting the bronze the, at the I moment. mean, it's true. They are putting this nonsense in, yeah. into exam questions now. Uh, let's move on. Uh, a series of MPs uh, and industry leaders are now demanding that the government reconsiders its ban on fracking mm. it was i think in 2017 uh, that it was decided that there would be no more shale gas drilling uh, there was a particularly fruitful uh, shale gas site up near blackpool uh, but uh, all the eco protesters said well if you carry on doing this there'll be a huge earthquake in blackpool there wouldn't have been a huge earthquake in blackpool so what could have been a very very fruitful source of energy cheap energy for this country possibly for a hundred years was shut down now given the circumstances we are now in we have a massive energy crisis uh, people can't afford their energy bills because partly they're paying 150 quid a year uh, to uh, fund Boris's fantasy dream that somehow or other uh, we can be powered by wind turbines and solar panels we can't uh, industries because of uh, soaring uh, energy prices uh, many factories are teetering on the edge uh, so uh, there are now very severe calls on the government to reintroduce fracking uh, why don't we just do it I think it's because a lot of the drive of the anti-fracking movement and uh, for anyone who doesn't know I'm sort of working in environmental policy as well as just annoy you every Monday night so I have a bit of a background in this stuff yeah. uh, it's driven by ideology the same reason that President Biden shut down the Keystone XL pipeline on day one if he didn't shut down fracking in America they carried on fracking and they got 120 years worth mm. of very cheap energy they're now selling that energy around the world as well as supplying all Americans with very cheap uh, fuel uh, very cheap energy they're utility Utility bills are rock bottom. Uh, that's a little annoying. Well, the gas prices are actually going up in the States because uh, the energy supply isn't as abundant as it was under the Trump administration because mm. they were a net energy exporter for the first time since President Nixon made the promise. And from 2017 to 2019, kept calling Trump a climate denier. It turns out America led the world in emissions reductions year on year, and it was because he domesticated gas production. So we could have got our gas supply pretty substantially from the States, a, a lot more from Keystone XL if Biden hadn't shut it down. So one of the things we can especially do while we're well, reopening... We get, we get, get it from here though couldn't we if we started well, it fracking takes time again. Yeah, but it takes time to put in the pipelines and that which i agree we do need to do that we also do need to do new nuclear we also need to do the north sea uh, oil the nuclear the trouble with nuclear yeah i mean e e even boris i think is accepting we need new nuclear mm. power stations because they are actually although the green people hate to admit it they are actually yeah. green uh, they're carbon neutral uh, we need some of those so we need more of those uh, but uh, they take you know about a decade, decade to yeah. build uh, and to put into place so that's not a solution for now uh, what could be a fairly quick solution was we could get cra cracking on fracking again mm. uh, and uh, Bob could be our uncle but uh, we've banned that because the eco nuts uh, don't want us to do it well, as you said, they kept talking about, oh, there's going to be massive earthquakes. Well, to borrow one of your phrases from before, you're going to have about a tremor about the same as a bus passing by your house. I wouldn't yeah. be worried about it that. It wouldn't be an earthquake in Blackpool. And then there were all those myths about, oh, my water was setting alight because of gas rupturing and coming up the water pipes. Those were pretty widely debunked. Yeah. Fracking is generally very safe. The, the concerns about it are, of course, we're using more fossil fuels. But we've gotten hooks on fossil fuels since the Industrial Revolution. It was massively necessary to lift everyone out of poverty, get them to mortality down, etc. Right? 
that's like taking painkillers for a really bad illness now sure we're hooked on the painkillers we're going to need to be for quite a while because renewables are terrible so a little bit of a, a stat for you uh, if we did an entirely renewable grid it would take from now till 2028 all the batteries in the world will need to come to the uk cost 2.9 trillion and even then it would only meet 27 percent of consumer demands we'd have massive rolling blackouts all throughout the week so it's not a project we can invest in we need a form of domesticated carbon capture mm. sure add it to it but domesticated fossil fuel production to get us through the transitional stage yeah we need that and do you know uh, what the single biggest uh, emitter of carbon emissions is in this country Go on. it's the drax power station that used to be uh, coal mm. and was then gas uh, and they, it couldn't be gas anymore because gas cannot be classified as a renewable mm. uh, so it now burns wood and, be, and, it, and, and it, because of that it emits more carbon emissions than anything else well, anyone in the could country have seen that coming because that happens crazy. in the third world all the time it's crazy but it's all so that we can say yeah. we're using renewables, renewables. it's yeah. just mad boris's greenery is a, a mad fantasy obsession it's going to cost us all a ton of money. Uh, well, it is costing us so all. I, well, a ton I, of money. I sat on a panel with uh, Chris Skidmore, who was the guy who changed, um, and he was a nice enough fellow, but he changed the target from 70% by 2035 to 100% zero emissions by 2050. And when I asked how he did it, he just went, oh, I just changed the number. <laughs> I, I looked at him like, so you, you didn't cost it? Are you serious? I was, well, I was tearing my hair out and making everyone's job massively harder, and it's just going to make us pay out the backside. Well, let's just the same deal where Boris says, oh, 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 our future is all wind turbine and solar panels mm. it cannot be that yeah. it can never be that and then in the same breath he says of course the great thing with renewable energy is it's so much cheaper no it's not it's costing us a fortune well it is if you're not paying for it mate yeah, yeah it's I know. Cheaper. well he's in marbella at the moment yeah. using <laughs> spanish power uh listen connor always a pleasure thanks a for pleasure. coming in uh, connor tomlinson there conservative commentator uh,